ways in which we can capture soil fertility outcomes of different farming systems related to Michael Goh's interest in helping farms and rewarding them for improving their soil fertility. And, and soil organic matter is obviously one of them. I'm wondering what the other ones you think would be useful if there were three or four. Soil organic matter, it all boils down to. Uh, that's the one thing with digital. But I mean, also, you're looking at soil health. Um, you know, you're looking for all, for all the different microorganisms in there and, and the, the mycorrhizal fungi. But it's very expensive to test for those things. Uh, and uh, it's, it's an area of research that you know, really hasn't been done. Um, again, measuring soil organic matter level. That isn't as straightforward as it might be. On our calcareous soils, for example, there's the thing called the loss on ignition test. That also kicks off calcium carbonate in our soil. So we, we have a lot to think we had 50% organic matter in our soil, but I just know it's not true. So we, we use the Dumas test to, to, test, to test that. Uh, but I think probably rather than measuring exactly what your level is, it's, it's important to know what direction you're going, whether you're increasing or you're just static. And I think as long as you're increasing, that's all that matters. Thanks, Ian. Um, I will just say as well, we're going to be talking more about measuring um, the impact of soil health um, later on with Lizzie and, and Richard Gantlett. Um, and also, we do have the visual um, evaluation of soil structure and earthworm count tools are on the Agroecology website. Um, so we've got a resource library on there, um, so do check it out. Um, do we have any more questions or comments? Hi, my name is Helen Stanton, I'm from Devonish Nutrition. Um, I'd like to ask the third speaker, you talked about the nutrient density of the meat. Um, have you found a way to communicate that effectively and get rewarded for that um, in the marketplace? Uh, question about nutrient density of our beef. It's the flavour. Once people have, once you've had beef that has been hung properly, that's been fed properly in the right breed, um, it's ruined me for going to restaurants because I'm eating a lot of conventionally reared beef and it's wonderfully tender, but there's no taste. And I think it's, it's the flame. I think really people, in, in this country, in England, traditionally, we haven't valued flavor that the, the rest of Europe has done. And I think there's increasing interest in wanting to know the provenance of the food and have something that has real flavor, that you haven't got a good barbecue sauce on or pepper sauce to make the flavour. Um, that's what sells it. <laughs> uh, Mark Dale, Farm on Sunset Levels. Uh, you've been talking about uh, sorry, uh, herbal layers and herbal crops. I remember uh, an event I was going to go to that was cancelled because it was on Cotswold Branch and they couldn't even establish herbal layers in there. I'm a heavy clay, 18 foot above sea level. I've got what I call well-drained sunset level soil, which is probably swimming around the home. Um, what, can I, what can I do in, in respect of you know, diversification of my species? S certainly, with turn that one off. Certainly, with, with herbal lays, um, you have to suit them to the soil type. Uh, and I've, I've always thought that our very light Cotswold rash was a real disadvantage. But I find that we can throw so many different species up there. Uh, we'll typically have, we've got 15 species, and they all tend to germinate, and they all grow. On heavy land, you, you, you have to have a different seed mix. Uh, there are certain things that will grow, but you won't get the biodiversity that we get. But you will get more, far more grass growth than we'll get. So you can grow grass, we can grow herbs. <coughs> and can you just turn that one off? And you make an extremely good point. So people will come to Dalesford and ask me what the rotation is, and they'll be feverishly writing down on a piece of paper this rotation. Well, I've learned not to do it anymore because in the north of the farm it's a Cotswold brash, in the south it's a very, very heavy clay. So there are micro uh, rotations on each part of the farm. And that's a big point to make to anybody that's considering a different style of farming, is that you farm what you can farm well on your soil types. Um, and we're going to talk about some of the crops that I've grown a little bit later when we get on to the trailers. Um, yeah, I think we'll, we'll take one more comment. Yeah, just, oh, just yeah. a comment on that. I was listening to, uh, I was listening to a World Service programme, and it's about data. 
and it's important you want if you want data like page, fresh and local, which we try to up to date and relevant. Excellent. Yeah, fantastic. Um, 